When you're on the water, it's important to understand how environmental factors like tides, water currents, water levels, and even the weather can affect you. It can affect your boat, speed, time to destination, fuel consumption, and especially boat handling. On salt water, tides can affect where your boat can travel and anchor safely. This makes it very important to have a local tide table on hand so you can look up the times of the high and low tides by date and location. In addition to a tide table, you should carry a nautical chart for the area you'll be boating in. Weather is the third environmental factor to consider. Before departing, and once you're on the water, pay close attention to weather reports and forecasts, changes in barometric pressure, and your own observations of the sky, clouds, and wind. A good rule of thumb, when in doubt, chicken out. Now let's talk about launching and retrieving, also known as getting your boat in and out of the water. You're going to want to start preparing to launch before reaching the ramp area to avoid congestion at the launch ramp. Check your engine and hull for any damage that might have occurred during transit. Make sure the wheel bearings on your trailer are cool. Just before you launch, remove the tie downs that are securing your boat to the trailer and reinstall the drain plugs in your boat. Next, check that the ball hitch and safety chains are still secure and make sure the travel bracket is released and the outboard is raised. Be sure to disconnect the trailer lights and now's the time to have all the passengers exit the vehicle and stand well away. Make sure the driver's seat belt is released and that the vehicle doors are unlocked. Then check that the ramp is clear before slowly backing down. Once you've backed down the ramp, set the vehicle brakes and block the wheels. Be careful when working behind the vehicle. Be sure the boat lines are being tended, then guide or push the boat off the trailer. Once the boat is floating in the water, disconnect the winch cable and roll it up. Retrieving a boat is essentially the opposite of launching. Use caution when winching the boat onto the trailer. Then pull well away from the ramp area. Remove your drain plugs, allowing any water to drain out of the boat. Then prepare for safe towing, as we discussed earlier. After each voyage, it is highly recommended that you wash your boat with a high-powered hose or take it through a car wash. This will help prevent the spread of invasive plants and animals, a growing problem nationwide. When boarding and loading, the first thing you want to do is secure your boat. This is also a good time to make sure everyone is wearing their life jacket. When loading items into the boat, avoid sudden movements or reaching overboard. Instead, hand the items one at a time to a person already in the boat. In most cases, the bow or front of the boat should be lighter than the stern. Before departing, make sure all the items are secured to prevent shifting. In small boats, tell passengers to keep their weight low and centered and remain seated while in the boat. Another important thing to be aware of is your boat's capacity. Overloading or improperly balanced loads are major contributors to swamping and capsizing, the leading cause of boating fatalities. You can check your boat's capacity by looking at the capacity plate mounted on your boat. If your boat doesn't have a capacity plate, you can determine the boat's capacity by multiplying the length of the boat by its width and then dividing that number by 15. This will give you a good indication of the number of people that can be on board. Before heading out, inform your passengers about important details such as the float plan and backup plans. Tell them what to expect in terms of weather conditions and trip length. Give specific instructions about the boat like how to start, stop, and steer and show them the location of the safety and survival equipment, as well as discuss emergency procedures. Docking and mooring procedures will vary depending on factors such as boat type, wind, and water conditions. In general, when docking your boat, you want to approach slowly, have your lines, fenders, and boat hook ready, and make sure your passengers have been briefed on the procedure. Then, approach the dock at a shallow angle and reverse your engine to stop. Mooring is similar to docking. First, prepare your vessel for approach, having all headway off as you reach the mooring pennant, and have a crew member, wearing a life jacket of course, ready to catch the pennant with a boat hook. Finally, securely tie your vessel to the mooring. Another necessary on the water skill is anchoring. The secret to proper anchoring is scope. Scope is the ratio of road to the depth of water. Road is the anchor line, plus any cable or chain. To calculate the length of proper scope, Multiply the water depth by about 7. That will give you the length of road you need. Of course, when calculating proper scope, you also need to consider the wind, current sea state, tidal range, and swing room. The more severe the conditions, the greater the scope should be. Once you've calculated your scope, you're ready to begin anchoring. First, survey your surrounding area for hazards. Pick your anchor spot, 
then head your boat into the wind or current. Once you reach your anchor spot, slowly lower your anchor into the water, making sure that the rope is free, untangled, and attached to your anchor. Allow the vessel to drift downwind or slowly reverse while releasing the road, then put the engine in neutral. Tie off the line and allow the anchor to dig in. If needed, release more line to meet current conditions. Then, be sure to retie the line securely to the vessel so it won't slip or jam. Finally, raise the lower unit or outboard. Never anchor from the stern or the back of the boat. This gives the boat less buoyancy and presents a more blunt aspect to the wind and waves and increases your chances of swamping. You should always secure your anchor when not in use. This will keep the anchor from accidentally deploying while underway.